Dating is haram, but how are we going to know each other? I like her, but she's not a religious person. Will it get better after we get married? Why do spouses become distant from each other over time? Does marriage kill love? The divorce rates are so high. So how can a person be sure to find the right person? Okay, everything you say is good, but what if I don't have any money yeah. and want to marry? But there is halal types of dating. I have done hundreds of nikah. And of course, I'm very sad to say I have done hundreds of counseling, maybe divorce. It's wajib for you to get married to help you stop that. Your wife, she's going to wake up, she's going to look at you like this and say, La ilaha illallah. This man, the rest of my life, Allah Allah. You're welcome. We want to know about you. Can you please introduce yourself to us? I'm your brother Yahya Adel Ibrahim, born in Canada, living in Australia, Egyptian heritage, married to a Turkish. So I am your neighbor almost, <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. So I'm an imam in Australia. Imam in Australia does nikah and does divorce, talaq. It is a difficult job. We see the baby come in and we see the body go into the qabr. It is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in everybody's life, we have a moment with them. In new boy and in also janaza. In marriage and also may Allah protect us in separation, divorce. I have done hundreds of nikah. And of course, I'm very sad to say I have done hundreds of counseling. Maybe divorce. May Allah protect us. When a person wants to marry a girl, he doesn't know how he's going to do that. Dating is haram, but how are we going to know each other? What is the procedure to get married? Dating the way the kuffar do it, the way people who don't have good Islam in their life do it, is haram. But there is halal types of dating. So just say you find somebody who is the right person. Can I find it from Facebook, Instagram, yeah, yeah, Twitter? Yeah. I, I'm not going to say where from. There is somebody you think this is somebody is the right person for me. Your job is not to make in your mind a love story. Most people, they get themselves, their heart breaks because they create a love story, especially sisters. They make a Bollywood movie. It's khalas, Titanic and uh, you know, khalas, finish. La, you have to follow the deen. Three simple steps. First step, when you make this like about the person, it have to be for more than one thing. You as a human being, you are made up of three parts. Physical, intellectual, and spirit. Ruh, inside me. Nafs, aql, mind, badan, body. If I look at a girl, at a woman, only for the body, and there is no aql and no nafs, I'm not going to have a happy marriage. If I say, oh, I only want the deen, and I look at her, and <laughs> it's not going to work. If she is beautiful, does namaz, but when we talk, our minds have no connection, it's gonna be hell. So you have to have balance, nafs, ruh, aql, badan. You cannot have one and miss the others, right? So if you are looking only yourself, you when you're looking, you don't look at all three. So who's going to give you the real truth? It's not going to be yourself and it's not going to be your best friend or her best friend. It's going to be other people who you ask and trust. Your father, your mother, your friend, her friends. Take the more shura, mushawara, the better. How do you know if you should even ask? Well, you need to talk to her. You need to meet her. And sometimes she might, the moment you say, Assalamu alaikum, she says, A'udhu billah, khalas. <laughs> Finish. You might see her as being beautiful, but she might see you as somebody else. And not because you want, it means the other person has to want. So if the physical is together, the Prophet ﷺ, he say, if the physical is okay matching, then the aql. You have to have conversation. He say to the Sahaba, Anadharta fi ainiha. Did you sit close enough that you can look in her eye, talk to her? Haddath to her? Did you talk to her? La. Talk to her first. How do you do this? It's that you do it in a place where you are not alone and you do it in a place that is with the permission of the families. It cannot be on its own. But doing it where, oh, I like her from a distance and I'm not ready for marriage. I don't have an, any any job, any future yet. And I say, oh yeah, yeah, mashallah. Then you are playing with the laws of Allah. But if you are ready for marriage and you see somebody ready for marriage, then you should not wait, but invite somebody between the two of you 
you who can connect you. What, what Don't you have this in your culture? Yeah, we have. Where somebody come and they put the shay, <laughs> and she might put shaker or she might put salt, right? <laughs> Isn't this? Yeah, same? we have, we have. If she doesn't like, you come to visit the house and she's like, "Audo billah min ash-shaytan rajim." Instead of putting uh, sugar, she puts salt. You take it and you leave. Khalas. <laughs> Right? Some cultures, they have this. Yeah, we have a co coffee culture. For example, you want to marry a girl uh, and your family is okay, yeah. or everybody is okay. You go to that house yes. and ask for permission to get married yeah. from the family. Yeah. So there is a coffee serve yeah. and the girl on every condition yeah. puts some salt, some pepper Allah. in it. And the, the guy takes the coffee and drinks it. If he drinks it, This means that he's going to struggle all the difficulties in the marriage. If he doesn't, the, the situation is suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I never had to do this. Mine was very sweet, mashallah. Allahumma barak ya Rabbi. Everything is okay. What about the procedure? Should we wait so that we know each other more? There's no know each other more. Sadly, 69% of marriages that are love marriages end in divorce. That's statistics in the Western world. I don't know about here. 69%, seven out of every 10 who get married, get divorced in the first three years, who meet each other like this, you know, Oh, I met her, my 28% of marriages that are introduction, somebody who knows me, somebody who knows her, say, Yahya, she is a good one. I think you should. Do you want me to let you two be together? You, I talk to her mother, you talk to her. When it's introduction to introduction, it's only 28% divorce. But we are taking in our religion, the habits of people who are failing in their life. And we are putting it in now. I want to ask a question on behalf of the cameraman. Yes. Okay, everything you say is good. But what if I don't have any money yeah. and want to marry? Just want to preserve my iman. marry somebody who doesn't have money. Everything is good, but That's we why don't I said, have don't money. Don't be very rich, marry somebody very poor. Don't be very poor and want to... Yeah. Even if she is poor, we need money. Yeah, okay. Then marry somebody who's willing to accept the amount of money you have. Does he exist in the world? Okay, <laughs> then then that's the answer to the question. See, marriage can be haram, can be makruh, can be mubah, can be mustahab, and can be wajib. It can be a must, it can be recommended, it can be okay, permissible, it can be disliked, and it can be junah, haram. Haram if I marry somebody without being truthful about something that is going to hurt them. Haram to marry somebody when I don't have the fulfillment of the things marriage requires. House, to give her accommodation, to feed her. It's haram. You can't marry someone and then say, well, listen, I don't, I'm homeless. You are now with me. Haram, because this is dhulm. This is oppression. Unless she is homeless like you. <laughs> Unless she is like you. Or, okay, I live with my parents. I have my room. Do you? Uh, is this okay for you and your family? Uh, sometimes you begin your life, you are still in a room, but you will end your life in a castle. Too many people like this. All of us like this. You begin your life small, but you begin working together, pleasing Allah, putting hand in hand, not doing it for other people, but for yourself. There are many good women, many good brothers who will marry somebody who is kuf, who is willing to work hard and start. That's what I mean, marry somebody like you. It is makruh to marry somebody for the wrong reason. Sometimes somebody get married just because I want to be out of my house. Some women, maybe at home they are not happy. Father is too hard, mother is too hard, not enough room in the house. Oh, yeah, I just want to get married. Any man, any inshallah, I just want to get married. She doesn't think about the future. So she get married to somebody, she don't want to be his wife. But I just want to leave. Nah. That's makruh, not good to do. Mubah is you want to get married and Allah has said, choose who you want. Mubah can be, Allah protect us, second wife. It's mubah. It's not recommended. It's not makruh. It's mubah. Yani, be careful. <laughs> It can be mustahab. Somebody, he have money. He have his job. Alhamdulillah. And now he is the right age. It's recommended to get married. You shouldn't wait. Oh, I want to do Hajj first. Okay, maybe. Oh, I want to help my family for... Okay, but it's better for you to get married. Number five, wajib. Somebody who is ready to be married, but doesn't get married, but is doing haram things. It's wajib for you to get married to help you stop the haram. The divorce rates 
are so high, even in the Muslim communities. So how can a person be sure to find the right person? You will never be sure of somebody being the right person. You know, my uncle, he told me, Yahya, when you come to get married, this before I was married, before I find my beautiful wife, mashallah, may Allah protect her, Song Yun. My uncle, he said, Yahya, when you get married, it's like buying watermelon. On the outside, looks green. You might hate it. You think it sounds right, but you don't know until you open. That's when you will see. You don't know until you are actually get married. So it's not about, do I have to be sure before? It's, do I have the right signs that this is a good match? And a good match does not mean a perfect match. Nobody is perfect for anybody. I'm not perfect. How can I expect them to be perfect, right? So we want to learn about those signs at least. Ah. That's a very good question. What are signs that somebody will be a good match? That their future plans and your future plans align together. That their past experience and your past experience is the same. So you might be surprised when I said, you know, my wife is her ancestry is Turkish. My ancestry is Egyptian. What is the same between you? No, it's very same. She was born in Australia. I was born in Canada. She never lived in Turkey. I never lived in Egypt. She learned in the English language. I learned in the English language. She comes from a family who practiced Islam, who value Islam. I come from a family who practiced Islam. She kept her origin, her culture, her language, her food, her friends. I kept my culture my language, my food, my friends. What makes us similar is not Turkish or Egyptian, is that my past experience, my future experience are similar. Even if we are not ethnically similar. Because what makes us together is Tawheed. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. So although the language may be different, mashallah, she speak Arabi, I speak, uh, I, won't, I won't speak Turkish, but a little bit. So you then find in that is baraka and khayr. In that is baraka and khayr. How was your experience if it's not private introduction? My wife, mashallah, she used to work in the place that I used to work. She was an accounts manager. And I see her, mashallah. There is no ha 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 ha. None, <laughs> none of this, mashallah. Mashallah, hijab, good person. Different culture. But yani, she's Turkish, I'm Arabi. But I am friends with her brother. So we used to play football together. So I say to myself, okay, let me get to know him. Let me get to know her cousins and other people. I want to know the family. Because as Muslims, we don't marry a person. We marry the family. We marry the community. Her brother, good man. Her sister's husband's good man. Inishta, good man. They are tertib with me in Hajj, mashallah. Good people. We are together. So I say, okay. So I call my father in Canada. I say, Baba, there is somebody who I like. Uh, she is here. She is Turkish family, not Arabi. I want you to come see them. He said, okay, tell me about them. I will come next week. Tell me about them. So I say this and this. I say to my friend, to my friend, her brother, I say, listen, I want to come to have tea in your house. I want to meet, you know. He goes, ah, oh, am I allowed to come and have tea? He goes, okay, yeah. Uh, let me ask. So he asked his mom. He asked his baba. He asked her. She said, yes, come. So I visit the house before my father come. And mashallah, it was good. I say, can I ask my father to come and join? He's coming to visit me. If he comes next week, would can I bring him? Yes. My father, when he come, he say, I don't want to talk to anybody except her first. He come off the plane. He say, you put me in a restaurant. Tell her which restaurant. We will have lunch together. I will talk to her. He stay with her three hours. I never know what happened until now. <laughs> what they talk about, I don't know anything. He come out of the restaurant. Yeah, well, what happened? She leave, she go back to home or work. I don't talk to her. I, what happened? What, what did you ask? I, nothing. What do you mean nothing? Nothing. I don't know. He talked to her. He wants to know from her something. I don't know what. He make sure that she is right for me. He tell her everything about me. He tell her everything Maybe about me. Allah, I, she asked him, he said, you ask me whatever you want. I don't know what she asked. I don't know what he say. But this is, this is the sunnah. This is our deen. So he give her everything. I say, okay, what now? He said, okay, t call them, say, I want to come visit them. So they say, come, we have dinner tomorrow. We had a, he stay two weeks, mashallah. Before he leave, we do our nikah. That's how quick it was. Two weeks, we do nikah. One week later, we do walima, big party. Then the next week in Canada, three weeks, three nikah. Too much money, but alhamdulillah. <laughs> alhamdulillah. What would you say if someone says that, I like her, but she's not a religious person. Will it get better after we get married? Always when we get married, we want to think about the future. 
So it's always good to think about the future. Finding somebody who is religious and who is practicing Islam is a good thing, but it's not the only thing. The Prophet ﷺ asks us to prioritize it. We should have somebody who has a love for Allah, a fear of Allah, who has hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help when things are not well. But at the same time, I also worry that sometimes we look at the outer when we talk about religious, what do we mean? Is it just how we dress or how we say certain words? Religion, of course, sometimes begins in the heart and that's only seen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would ask that the person look Look at the person as a complete package. So see what their education is, what their family structure is like, what their age and uh, job and occupation, life, uh, life mission, what they want for the future as they begin to think about is this the right person for me or not. Never make it about one answer to one question. Even if that question is, mashallah, they're religious or not. So be being religious is not enough for you? Not enough. No, would, you, would you marry your wife if she was not religious? Alhamdulillah, uh, my wife was religious. And uh, would I marry my wife if, I, if she was not religious? No. When you say not religious, what do you mean by not religious? I mean pra praying five pray? times a day, fasting, yeah. these kind of things. Yeah, but what if, okay, what if somebody prays five times a day, most days, and some days they miss one? Are they not religious or want to be better religious? It's one of those things where... Maybe sometimes we are looking too deep from the outside rather than from the inside. So being religious is not just praying, but behaving other things you mean, right? Uh, being religious is for Allah Azza wa Jalla. Ad-deen indallahi al-Islam. It's with Allah, it's not with us. A person can be sitting in front of you, they look religious, and they're not. I had one sister, I was her uh, imam, uh, imam uh, nikah kitab. MashaAllah, in the beginning, they, she said, oh, he's going to make me very happy. He had big beard, MashaAllah, <laughs> wear the nice clothes, MashaAllah. And then after three, four months, she came and she said, Sheikh Yahya, uh, you know, I married the Fajr beard. He have a beard of somebody who pray Fajr, pray Subh, but he never pray Fajr. So I married the beard, but I never married a man who prays Fajr. So if you look just for the beard, if you look just for outside, and you don't, are not careful by looking at everything else, their amal, their akhlaq, their family, their habits, their friends, if you don't look at more than one thing, you are only asking for trouble. Why do spouses become distant from each other over time? Isn't it possible to preserve life like in the early days? Does marriage kill love? Marriage is the pursuit of love. We are not ever going to be in love until after marriage. Before marriage, there are five stages to marriage. The first stage is called in love stage, where for everything looks beautiful. MashaAllah. You come, you visit the house, no nikah yet. You come visit, MashaAllah. She sits and oh, every, your eyes, you have glasses, make everything beautiful. Second stage is honeymoon. You do nikah, honeymoon, everything sweet, MashaAllah. Third stage is called conflict. Conflict has to happen with everybody. In the middle of the night, after your honeymoon, one month, two months, one year go by, your wife, she's going to wake up, she's going to look at you like this and say, La ilaha illallah. This man, the rest of my life, Allah Allah. What's gonna happen? You're gonna look and say, Allahu Akbar. That's it, nobody. Oh, she do this, I don't like this, I don't. You begin to make a list in your mind, I don't like this. So because you make a list, she make a list. And now you say, I don't like this. She say, I don't like this. You begin, the plane begins to fall. Stage number four is called pull up. You have to learn how to fight with each other, but not break each other. Rasulullah he say, the woman, she is made from the rib of a man. If he tries to break the top, is going to break everything. You have to learn to enjoy life even when there is something different to you. You have to listen to her thought, understand her mentality. Maybe she is, you are going from here to here straight. Maybe she go a little bit this way, but she wants to go there. Let her go. This is the sunnah of the Prophet She is from Dila. She's going to go a little bit around, but she will get to where you want her to get. Leave her. So that's stage number four, learning how to fight with each other. Fighting is good. Fighting that is respectful, no bad words, no misbehavior, no hurting the heart, no hurting the body. Expressing yourself, but not trying to hurt the other person is good. Number five is pull up stage. 
is autopilot. You go up and down, you know, not too far, not too that. You fight, you uh, save yourself. Autopilot becomes like our parents, 50 years old, mashallah, 60, 70 years old, married their whole life, sometimes happy, sometimes not happy, but they know each other's limits. Is your plane in autopilot? Always in autopilot, mashallah. <laughs> Sinking up, mashallah. What would you advise to your daughter when she's about to marry? You have one minute. The advice of the Sahaba, one of the women of the Sahaba, she said to her daughter, لا يرى منك إلا خير. Let him only see clean things on your clothes, on your body, in your hair, in your self. ولا يشم منك إلا طيب ريح. Let him only smell something good on you. Be careful when he's hungry and when he's tired and needs sleep. وحسن التدبير في الأولاد والمال. Be careful with the children you have, that he sees you are looking after their education and that you are not just throwing his money away. And number five and six is, and this is good, Help him to do what Allah asked him to do. Subhanallah. Anything Allah asked you to do, help him. Suhoor, make it for Ramadan. A time for tahajjud, wake him up. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Imam Muslim, Allah's rahmat fall come to a woman who qamat litusalli bil She woke up to pray at night, tahajjud. She saw her husband sleeping. She said, come on, wake up, you can pray too. فَأَبَى He said, ah, oh, leave me alone. فَنَضَحَتْهُ بِالْمَاءِ She took some water, not pour the water, <laughs> no, no pouring water. نَضَحَتْهُ She take water and she go like this. فَاسْتَيْقَذَ فَصَلَّى They both wake up, they pray to Allah before subh, before fajr. So Allah bring rahma into their home. أَعِنِيهِ عَلَى مَا أَمَرَهُ اللَّهُ بِهِ Help him in what Allah asked him. If you have those things together, Wallahi, my daughter, your daughter will be happy. Thank you.